I said last week we're doing a series called Preparing the Royal Highway. Last week was a highway under construction, and this week is GPS. What does GPS mean? No. Global positioning system is what GPS means, but you're right. Wait. The lesson that we have for this evening is actually the lesson for week four of Advent, which works out very nicely, um, since week four of Advent is our cantata. But it's an interesting passage. And I, if, it, if you have time tonight, go back and read Matthew chapter 1, verses 1 through 17. It's the lineage of Jesus. And there's two interesting entries in that lineage. But it's, it's broken down into two sets of 14. And 14 is... Two times seven, right? Confirmation kids, remember? Numbers in the Bible. Seven, twelve, three. Fourteen is two times seven, which means it's a perfect thing. Doubly perfect. So Jesus is the chosen one sent to us so that we can know what God wants us to do. But Joseph is this unique figure in this whole situation here. Because Joseph is... Who is Joseph? It's not going to light, Wyatt. It's okay. Wyatt. It's out of, it's out of oil. It's okay. Joseph is who? Yes, but not that Joseph. Not actually yet. You see, that's the interesting part to all of this. In in Joseph's day, in Jesus when Jesus was born, day, how did marriage happen? It was arranged by who? And was it like our marriages today, like an engagement? This, this period that they're in is like an engagement period, right? But it's not like today where an engagement can easily be broken off. This is a, this is a um, contract that was made between these two families, between the two sets of parents, Joseph's parents and Mary's parents. And they made a contract with each other that their children were going to be married. And there was a betrothal. So at the point of betrothal, the contract was made. And before that happened, and before the next step happened, what's the next step? They get put together in a betrothal. The parents make this contract. And then what happens? There's the... There's what? There is, but what happens in that period of time? No. Yes, but no. What normally happens in that time? The two aren't together. What happens in the second chapter of John? Does anybody know? Other than Kurt. (laughs) Second chapter of John is Jesus' first sign in the Gospel of John, and that is the... The wedding at Cana. The party, right? The party happens. And at the end of the party, then what happens? The husband does what? Boy, y'all, do you not drink any coffee today? I mean, what's going on? Awfully quiet tonight. The husband does what after the wedding feast? He takes his wife home. This is PG. This is PG. (laughs) It's not even PG-13. He takes his wife home. So in in Joseph's day, in Jesus' day, in Mary's day, there's two steps to a wedding. There's the betrothal. There's the contract that the parents make with each other. And then there's the, the taking home of the spouse or the taking home of the wife. Right? So the husband takes his wife home. But in between these times, that's what's happened here. Then between the time that Joseph's and Mary's parents made this contract, and between the time that Joseph took Mary home to be his wife, Mary got pregnant. And so what then should happen 
according to Jewish law. She should be stoned. Why? Because she committed adultery. Right. So Joseph should drag her out into the, the square and stone her to death. But he doesn't. He decides to do what? It says in our reading. Dismiss her quietly. Right. Because he can't, he can't marry her. Because she committed adultery. So it's not proper for him to marry her. Even in that moment where she is at her weakest and at her most vulnerable and in probably in the most need to have someone else around. Right? Yes? No? Women who have had a baby, right? You want someone else around when you have a newborn child at home with you, right? To help, hopefully, a little bit. I hope that you don't know. So that's okay that you don't know. You're not old enough yet to know. So, of course, you're as old as... How old are you? 13. How old was Mary when she when she had Jesus? 13 or 14. So, right. So at her most vulnerable point, Joseph says, I can't marry you. So, But rather than to follow through with what the law says, he decides to dismiss her quietly. To let her go, to not marry her, but also not to ridicule her or to allow her to be stoned according to the law. But in that moment, an angel comes over and says... Don't be afraid. Actually, it doesn't. It just he had in a dream. He had a dream because the, the angel didn't actually appear to him. The angel appeared to him in a dream. Right. He said, take don't be afraid to take Mary as your wife. Because the child is of the Holy Spirit. You see, sometimes you need that little device on your dashboard or on your phone to tell you where you're going. And sometimes we think we know what life is going to bring us and where we're going to go and all the things that are going to happen. And then something just flies out of nowhere. We don't know what's going to happen next. And we don't know how to handle it. At that point is the point where you have to just let go and hang on. Yes, Wyatt? What is not true? We'll get to that later. Ask your dad. He'll tell you. (laughs) You see, God sometimes throws us a curve. It's like that shoot coming up out of the stump where something seems to be laid to waste that it's not going to produce anything ever again. But up out of the middle of it comes something that brings new life. Right? In those moments where we can't possibly see a way out and we think we have to do it our own way and, and just make it through, if those moments that we can turn around and watch God bless you and know that He's leading us and know that He's guiding us, those are going to be the moments that we'll be able to do things that no one else would. Because God will lead us and God will guide us. If we can just trust And know that His way is always better than ours. So do like Joseph does. Listen to God. Follow where He leads you, even though you don't understand it. Because I can't imagine what He thought when He woke up from that dream. But He did it. And he took Mary and raised a son that wasn't his. And all of us should be thankful for that. So be like Joseph. And go where God calls you to go. Even if you don't understand it.